Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. So the NBA season is just around the corner and every single year we go into the season very excited about our team and the moves they made in the offseason or sometimes the lack of moves. Um, but there's always like that one player in the starting lineup that typically is the weakest point. I mean, playing simple, man, like every team has to have a worse player in the starting lineup unless you're the Golden State Warriors had like the Marcus Cousin at center. But even for the most part, they had like Kevon Looney playing over there, which he's not a bad player. But he was considered the weakest link. So for today's video, what I did is I took these 2019-2020 uh, NBA season rosters. And I took the worst player in every team's starting lineup. And I replaced them with the best player of that position from their all-time roster. So for example, the worst position on the Detroit Pistons was Tony Snell at the small forward spot. I replaced him with Grant Hill, who is the best small forward in Detroit Pistons history. So before we go on this video, if you guys don't mind dropping a like on this one, man, that goal is always 1,000 likes. would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Always helps grow the channel. And as always, guys, check out that second channel, Extra Crispy, for daily NBA content over there. Link to that in the description below. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys all the rosters that we're looking at right here, man. So keep in mind. Some teams got like the better end of the stick. Is that even a saying? But then others, because you know, in some cases, it's like, okay, well, their weakest player was a shooting guard, but maybe they don't like historically have good shooting guards on their franchise. Where in other cases, it's like, okay, well, the Cavaliers' weakest spot was small forward. They end up getting LeBron James, who is a uh, top two player of all time. Top one, depending on who you're talking to, right? So here we go. Philadelphia 76ers. This team actually lucked out, man. Okay, well, this is what we got Karan Butler on the Washington Wizards. Okay, now we got to the Philadelphia 76ers. Allen Iverson is going to be replacing Josh Richardson. Also, keep in mind, I did use ESPN.com for depth charts. Um, I don't think we know, like, officially what depth charts are going to be, but it, do it does give you, like, the best estimate. So, yeah, just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks, we got Sidney Moncrief replacing Wesley Matthews as shooting guard. For the Chicago Bulls, Kobe White was the lowest rated guy, so we went with Derrick Rose at the point guard position, man. Cleveland Cavaliers, we got LeBron James uh, replacing Jetty Osmond. Also, keep in mind, too, guys, we did base this off a of 2K rating. So, if you want to argue that somebody else is worse in the starting lineup, definitely let me know in the comment section below. I will definitely listen to that. Uh, for the Boston Celtics, we had Ennis Cantor as the starter. He is getting replaced with Bill Russell. Like, literally, you go from no defense Ennis to one of the best defensive guys of all time, Bill Russell, plus all those championship rings. This team's definitely going to be dangerous. Uh, for the Los Angeles Clippers, like, this team was kind of interesting because I didn't quite know if Paul George is going to be at the shooting guard or power forward position. I assumed starting shooting guard. That totally could not be the case. Uh, but I was like, the team likes power forwards anyway, so I went with Elton Brand at the four spot, and then just Paul George is going to start at the two. Like I said, I don't know what the case is for that in real life. Um, for the Memphis Grizzlies, we do have Tony Allen as shooting guard, so not a lot of offense right there, but also one of the better defensive players of all time. Uh, for the Atlanta Hawks, you got Joe Caldwell. I'm going to be honest, man. I don't know anything about this guy. I thought he used, I thought he used to be the uh, head coach for the Indiana Lapalus uh, Colts and also the Detroit Lions. Uh, for the Miami Heat, we got Dwayne Wade uh, replacing, I believe, Deion Waiters. For the Charlotte Hornets, we got Eddie Jones at the two spot. We got Adrian Dantley for the Utah Jazz at small forward, replacing Joe Ingles. For the Sacramento Kings, we got Chris Webber at center. I know he's traditionally more of a power forward. I do feel like he'd be more of a center in today's league. And I wanted to use him over to Marcus Cousins just because I think it would be more fun. They were both like the same exact rating. Um, for the New York Knicks, we got Carmelo Anthony at the small forward position because I do think R.J. Barrett is actually going to be playing more of the two spot. I could be wrong about that, but that's what the depth chart told me at least. Uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers, okay. This is going to make the Lakers a super team, man, because according to reports, you know, LeBron is going to be at point guard. So for that reason, that's not the weakest position. Kyle Kuzma at the three, AD at the four, Dwight Howard at the five. That leads the two spot with Danny Green getting replaced with the black mile of Kobe Bryant. This team probably wins the championship, in my opinion, although there's definitely a few teams out there that can make a run for the money. Uh, for the Orlando Magic, we got Markel Fultz being replaced with Penny Hardaway. For the Dallas Mavericks, we got Derek Harper replacing the point guard position. Of course, you can't replace Chris Stops with Dirk Nowitzki, man, because Chris Stops is the beast. Uh, for the Brooklyn Nets, we got Buck Williams at the four spot. I don't know much about his game either. He's 6'8", so he might actually fit nicely in this NBA, but not really a lot of offense going on with him. For the Denver Nuggets, we got Alex English at the small forward position. Was the same rating as Camaro Anthony. We used Melo on the Knicks, so I was like, all right, we'll use Alex English over here on the Denver Nuggets. For the Indiana Pacers, we got Paul George returning back to the Indiana Pacers, uh, playing with Victor Oladipo, replacing. I believe TJ Warren for the New Orleans Pelicans. We got Chris Paul back out there, man, trying to win MVP because I actually watched the video on my second channel about six times uh, MVP voters got it wrong. And the dude was saying how Chris Paul should have won the MVP, I believe, in 2008 over Kobe Bryant. You guys give me your thoughts about that. 
Uh, we got the Detroit Pistons with Grant Hill. Going to be a nice piece to the puzzle of the squad for the Toronto Raptors. Just like that, Kawhi Leonard is back in Canada. Houston Rockets, we got T-Mac at the small forward position. I do think he played a lot of shooting guard also, but I thought small forward just made sense. And I wanted to see T-Mac again in the NBA. Uh, for the San Antonio Spurs, we got David Robinson at the center spot, uh, replacing Jakob Pertle. So he's definitely going to bring, I don't know, man, like according to ES, or I'm sorry, uh, Bleacher Report, he's like top 10 player of all time. I don't know about that one. Uh, Phoenix Suns, we got Amari Stoudemire replaying Dario Saric. It's a big upgrade right there. For the OKC Thunder, we got Kevin Durant back on the OKC Thunder, replacing somebody i think i don't even remember who man maybe andre roberson somebody like that uh minnesota Timberwolves. we got kevin garnett because this team literally does not even have a good power forward out there probably run like wiggins at the two and robert covington at the three i mean i guess you can make the argument that maybe like jared culver is going to start and maybe covington would ran the four spot but regardless it would have been somebody like that anyway so we'll just do the lineup like that uh portland trailblazers we got lamarcus aldridge la back on the team replacing the four spot golden state warriors this team might actually win it guys Will Chamberlain, 98 overall, best center on that team, of course. And, uh, yeah, he replaced Kevon Looney, Willie Cauley-Stein, somebody like that. And the Washington Wizards, as you guys already saw, is Karan Butler. So, out of all these teams, who do I think is going to win it? I mean, all these teams got upgraded, plain and simple, man. Like, just how it is. But I'm probably going to say I have my money on probably the... I think it's going to come down to, down to the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. As far as the Eastern Conference goes... I mean, we all just saw, well, I mean, this is pretty damn good right there with Dwayne Wade out there. We just saw Kawhi Leonard, you know, lead the reference to a championship. So he's back on the team. Maybe we can do it again. I don't know, man. Uh, we are going to go ahead, though, simulate this season and see how dominant these teams are now that their weakest point is off the team. Okay, so we are at the end of the regular season. Apparently, I got the Atlanta Hawks showing. They did not do very good with Joe Caldwell at their man. 29 wins for them on the season. One more game against Cleveland Cavaliers. And finish the W on the season. MVP goes towards the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron James. Uh, which is actually kind of surprising him playing with Kobe. Just because you don't think he'd be, you know, having the ball. I guess he'd probably be passing the Kobe, right? Maybe Kobe play a little off ball. No, that's not going to happen. Zion, rookie of the year. Dennis Schroeder, six man. Bill Russell, defensive player. No surprises there whatsoever. Terry Rozier, most improved. And Frank Vogel as coach of the year. So it sounds like Paul George. Yeah, because no, I'm sorry. He's not the coach of the uh, Pacers anymore. He's the coach of the Lakers. Okay, all NBA first team. We got Penny Hardaway, LeBron from Cleveland making it, Kevin Garnett, and Chris Webber. Uh, all NBA second team with D Wade. We got Kevin Durant from OKC, Grant Hill, Will, uh, Will Chamberlain. Then all NBA third, Iverson, Chris Paul. Adrian Danley and David Robinson. I'm just looking at the guys that have been added to the game right here for us. Uh, so, yeah, as far as seedings, we got Lakers, San Antonio, Houston, Denver, Clippers. Uh, who was on Clippers, man? I forgot. I, oh, yeah, it was, uh, damn, it, it was Ellen Brand. That's right. Uh, OKC, Golden State, and Minnesota. Meanwhile, we got Philadelphia, Chicago with D. Rose, Detroit Pistons, Boston Celtics, Toronto. I told you, man, it's going to be a sleeper team out there with Kawhi now. Uh, and then we got Orlando with Penny Hardaway. And then we got Brooklyn and Milwaukee. So I forgot who was on Brooklyn. Oh, Buck Williams. And then Milwaukee had City Moncrief. Okay. Let's go to these player stats on the season. I'm going to scroll through it real quick here just so you guys can kind of pause if you want to and see how your favorite. Yo, did Miami make it? Damn, Miami. He was D Wade. Didn't make it. What's up with that, 2K? Simulation is rigged, bro. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to scroll through this real quick here just so you can see. And for the most part, the added players are the ones that have been dominating, man. We got Kobe. Wow. 10 assists. I mean, I know Kobe actually has, like, a career average of five assists, believe it or not. He has, like, this stigma of being a ball hog, which, yes, he could take ball hogish shots at time, but still, he would get other players involved out there, man. So, yeah, we got Alex English balling up. We got Paul George, Chris Paul with 13 assists per game, Grant Hill at 27, 8, and 9. Very nice Kawhi Leonard, you know, picking up right where you left off out there. Teammate only at 14, but... Also got the 10 assists. He was more like a point forward, which I don't really know how that would be working out with James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Like, yeah, T-Mac probably not going to have the ball in his hands all too much. Will Chamberlain, 20 and 15. You know, who, uh, we got D'Lo, second leading score. Okay. Very nice for him, man. Allen Iverson at 33 points and seven assists at that shooting guard spot. I would actually love to see that, man. That would be a lot of fun. Derrick Rose, 22 and 7. Uh, okay, okay. We got Kemba, Gay, uh, Gordon Hayward, Bill Russell. Not really a big-time scorer, of course. And yeah, there we go. We are now at the Atlanta Hawks. So let's go ahead and simulate this. Let's go ahead and simulate current round right here, man. See how it goes. I'm going to say Philly and the Lakers. I'm going to jump on the number one seed bandwagon right here. Uh, we got Brooklyn Nets gone. Yeah, Buck Williams. We're like, yeah, I'm not going to say that uh, on camera. Okay, see with Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Durant gone. Denver Nuggets gone with, uh, yeah, what's his name? Detroit Pistons gone. 
Bulls gone, Timberwolves gone. Okay, so we got the Lakers, Houston, Golden State Clippers, Toronto, Milwaukee. Ooh, that's going to be a good series, man. And then we got Philly and Boston. Simulate round here. Here it goes. Here it goes. And we got the Bucks are eliminated. Uh, Rockets gone, Celtics gone, and Clippers gone. So we're down the Lakers. Golden State, I did predict that originally in the Western Conference. Philly and Toronto simulate around here, man. See how this all goes. And the Lakers have been eliminated. Now, Kobe Bryant gone to Will Chamberlain. And then we got Kawhi Leonard. It's just, I guess it appears that if you would have gave Allen Iverson over to the Philadelphia 76ers, plus including Al Horford, it's going to make him a lot better too. Uh, that was enough to beat Kawhi Leonard and the Toronto Raptors. We are down to Allen Iverson versus Wilt Chamberlain for the biggest difference maker out there of all time. Man, let's check out these closeout games real quick here. Just see how these guys performed on both sides. Wilt at 12, I'm sorry, 21 and 12, two steals, two blocks. Then over here, we got Iverson dropping 28 with nine assists, getting to that free throw line. All right, here it is, man. Simulate round. Who's going to win it? Philadelphia. No, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I can't say I was surprised. I, I, I can't say that I was surprised adding Wilt Chamberlain to Stephen Curry, one of the most dominant centers of all time to the greatest shooter in NBA history. Yeah, I would say that probably went to a championship in this era of basketball. Uh, but regardless, guys, I do hope you all enjoyed this video. I love doing videos like this, man. So uh, pretty soon I'm going to be doing what if every NBA player was in their prime. That's coming up very quickly. Got a rebuild coming down pretty soon too, man. But yeah, just as always, thank you guys so much for your support. Just love waking up every single day and being able to make you guys content like this. It really means a lot, man, that you guys take your time out of your day to watch my content. So yeah, man, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Check out that second channel, Extra Crispy. And peace out, my friends.